quality control of capsules. In previous sessions, we have seen the uh, details about hard gelatin capsule and soft gelatin capsule. Today, we will discuss the quality control of capsules. So, what is meant by quality control? Once your product is ready to dispatch, once the finished product is ready, then before uh, before forwarding to the market, first we have to check the quality of your products, whether it is uh, as per the specification mentioned in various monographs or not. So, in the same way, your capsule have to qualify the various quality control test. And what are this quality control test and why it is significant? Quality control test divided into two groups. First one is the physical test, and in this capsule, you have to qualify the disintegration test and weight variation test. Next one is the chemical test, and in this, there are various chemical tests like dissolution test, assay, contained uniformity, stability testing, and moisture permeation test. So, before dispatching your product into the market, first that capsule or any type of dosage form you have to qualify this type of different quality control test. So let us discuss one by one evaluation of capsules. So first we have to evaluate the capsule for weight variation test, then moisture permeation test, contained uniformity, dissolution test and disintegration test. So these are the various quality control tests which your capsules have to qualify. Then first one is your weight variation test. So what is weight variation test? In this, 20 capsules are taken randomly. Once your batch is ready, suppose in a batch you have prepared near about thousands of capsules. So from these thousands of capsules, you just pick up 20 capsules randomly. Any 20 capsules and take an average weight of this 20 capsule. And then uh, individually you have to compare your each capsule with the average weight. Getting my point? First you have to take 20 capsules randomly, take an average weight and then individual capsules we have to compare with the average weight and when your capsule will complies the weight variation test when the weight of individual capsules fall within 90 to 100, uh, 90 to 110 percent of average weight so <coughs> your capsule will qualify the weight variation test when each and every capsules will be in range of 90 to 110 percent of the average weight suppose the average uh, suppose expected weight is 100 milligram then each and every capsule must be having 90 milligram to 110 milligram of the average weight so then and then only your capsule will qualify as the weight variation test then second test moisture permeation test so in this test, a unit dose container is packed along with the dehydrated desiccant pellets. What is meant by desiccant pellets? So this type of desiccant pellets are nowadays available with every electronic devices. Or in most, along with most of the product, this type of desiccant pellets are packed. Uh, when you uh, unpack your mobile phone, whenever you are going to buy any mobile phone or any electronic devices, you can see that there are some uh, sachets of some desiccant pellets so that the so that it will absorb the moisture, surrounding moisture, and keep your mobile phone or any devices in a safe way. So, in the same way, this type of desiccant pellets are uh, packed with the unit dose container. Unit dose container means your capsule. So each capsule said to be a unit dose container. So your capsules are packed with the desiccant pellets. And what is the property of this desiccant pellets? Changing the color in presence of moisture. If there is any presence of moisture, the desiccant pellets will change their color. So after some time, you have to observe the pellets for change in color, whether there is any change in color or not. So any change in color indicates the absorption of moisture. Suppose previously your desiccant pellets was uh, white in color and when you place along with the capsules after some time it may become light blue or yellowish color. So this change in color indicates that there is a presence of moisture. So then finally you have to 
take the uh, finally measuring the weight of desiccant pellets after changing the color you have to take or you have to measure the desiccant pellets and just find out the difference before and after the test what was the weight of uh, desiccant pellet before the test and what was the weight of desiccant pellet after the test so that difference will gives you the amount of moisture absorbed by the capsules amount of moisture absorbed by the desiccant pellet so in this way you can find out the presence of moisture content then next one is the content uniformity test content uniformity means whether each and every capsule contain same amount of drug or not that is called as contained uniformity and this test is applicable to all capsule which are to be given by oral administration and this can be done by means of assay procedure for this test sample of the content is assay as described in the individual monograph suppose you want to check the uh, assay assay means what percent purity with uh, suppose the claim drug is uh, said to contain 100 mg of the drug suppose the pharmaceutical industry claim that this capsule contain 100 mg of the drug then whether it is actually containing 100 mg or not that you can uh, uh, that you can check by means of assay procedure so this type of assay procedure are described in the individual monograph you can refer the indian pharmacopoeia us pharmacopoeia british pharmacopoeia or any as per the given specification so if it is mentioned that your drug uh, your capsule should contain not less than 110% uh, suppose not less than 90 or not more than 110% so if your drug lies in this range then your capsule will qualify as the content uniformity test so in this way we have to observe the capsules for content uniformity test and how to do the test randomly you have to take 30 capsules so 30 capsules are selected and 10 of this assay individually so you can take 30 capsule randomly and out of this 10 first we are going to take a batch of 10 capsules so go for assay of this 10 capsule and find out the drug content so at least 9 of this contain 85 to 115% so out of this 10 capsule nine capsule must be in range of 85 to 115 if one of the capsule is in uh, sub, suppose one of the capsule contain 84 mg or 83 mg or it may be 116 or 17 mg then it will uh, pass the contained uniformity test and none of the capsule shall contain 75 to 125% none of the capsule otherwise Uh, we are we are going to disqualify the batch okay so at least 9 out of 10 capsule must be in range of 85 to 115 and suppose one or three of them fall outside outside of 85 to 115 suppose uh, we can say 83 or 4 or maybe 116 or 17 so in this way if one or three capsules are outside of the range then remaining 20 capsules are individually assayed initially what uh, what we have done from 30 capsule we assayed 10 capsule and if one or three falls outside of the limit then we are going to take remaining 20 capsule then again go for individual assay of the 20 capsule and after assaying all 30 tablet after assaying all 30 tablets the capsule will qualify as the contained uniformity test if not less than 27 capsules in range of 85 to 115% and again none of the capsule shall in range of 75 to 125 so in this way we have to go for contained uniformity test so how to perform the test first take 30 capsule and then assay 10 capsule any 10 capsule and out of this 10 9 capsule must be in range of 85 to 115 and none of the capsule in range of 75 to 125 if one or three capsule not in range of 85 to 115 then again assay remaining 20 capsules and after assaying all 30 capsules finally 27 cap uh, finally not less than 25 capsules 
shall in range of 85 to 150 and again none of the capsule fall in range of 75 to 125 percent so this is the contained uniformity test next one is the resolution test so place 1000 ml of water free from dissolved air having temperature of 36.5 to 37.5 degrees celsius so you might have seen this type of dissolution apparatus so this is called as basket type of dissolution apparatus because it contains a basket in some apparatus you can see paddle so that is called as paddle type of apparatus so uh, basket generally we are using for capsule type of dosage power why we are using basket type of apparatus for capsule because capsules are light in weight and it may float on the surface of water and for dissolution test your drug or capsule must be below the water level so that's why in order to keep your capsule within the dissolution medium we have to use the basket type of dissolution apparatus and suppose you are using cap, uh, tablet tablet is generally heavier than the water so that's why it will sink at the bottom of dissolution apparatus so in that case there is no need to use basket directly you can use the paddle type of apparatus so how to perform the dissolution test first you have to fill near about 1000 ml of water free from dissolved air into the apparatus and then maintain the temperature near about 37 degrees celsius why to maintain the temperature around 37 because we have to simulate the body condition your body temperature is near about 37 degrees celsius so that's why we are going to simulate the biological condition place specified number of capsule in the basket and start the motor and adjust the speed 100 rpm or as per the monograph in some monographs uh, there may be 50 rpm 75 rpm or 100 rpm so just refer the monograph and adjust the rotation of your basket so this basket will start rotating at the given speed then withdraw the required volume of solution after 45 minutes suppose you can see 5 ml of the solution we can withdraw after 45 minutes and after 45 minutes just uh, prepare out 5 ml of the solution filter and weigh the amount of active ingredient by the method specified in the monograph so you can assay the drug release either by means of titration or by using uv spectrophotometer repeat the results for four times and test set to pass if the release of amount of active ingredient is not less than 70 percent of the stated amount of drug so when your drug will pass the dissolution test when not less than 75 percent of the drug will release after 45 minutes so minimum 70 percent of drug must be released after 45 minutes then and then only it will uh, pass the dissolution test the next one is the disintegration test here is the image of disintegration apparatus so place one capsule in each basket here in this image you can see in disintegration apparatus there are six, uh, six baskets having 10 mesh screen size so first you have to place one capsule in each of the basket and cover it with this type of mesh and then set the temperature of 37 plus or minus 2 degrees Celsius that is your bi uh, biological temperature and then operate the apparatus for 30 minutes for hard gelatin capsule and 60 minutes for soft gelatin capsule then test set to pass if no residue is left on the screen of apparatus so after 30 minutes or 60 minutes there should not be any residue of the capsule on this mesh size of the screen so there should be no residue on this 10 mesh screen size repeat the test for 12 capsule if one or two capsule fails to disintegrate so out of six suppose one of the capsule fails to disintegrate in that case again we have to repeat the test for 12 capsule again we can add uh, one capsule in each and in this way you can repeat the test for two times so in this way 
Initially, we have added six capsule and if one of the capsule fail, then again we are going to use the 12 capsule. So 12 plus 6, so total 18 capsules we are utilizing. So out of this 18 capsule, if more than one or two capsule fails to disintegrate, uh, out of this 18 capsule, the test passes if 16 out of 18 disintegrate in the given time. Suppose 16 caps, uh, 16 hard gelatin capsule disintegrate in 30 minutes, then it will uh, complete the test. So in this way, 16 capsule have to pass the disintegration test. Then your capsule will qualify the test. Next one is the packaging and storage of capsules. So capsule should be packed in a well closed glass or plastic container. So you, you might have seen that the vitamin E capsule. Uh, cod liver oil capsules are available in the market. So these are available in the glass or plastic bottles generally and these are said to be stored at not more than 30 degrees Celsius and capsules are individually protected by enclosing in strip or blister packaging. So in strip packaging capsule is hermetically sealed within the strip of aluminum foil. Here in this image you can see this is called as strip packaging. So two aluminum foils are there and in between two aluminum foils we are going to pack the uh, hard gelatin capsules. So this is called as strip packaging and this is called as blister packaging. In blister package, a press on blister pours the capsule through the backing strip. So if you want to utilize this capsule, so first you have to break the aluminum foil. Once you break the aluminum foil, then you can utilize the capsules. Then capsules have longer, uh, larger shelf life in unopened glass container, glass bottles than in strip or blister packages. What does it mean? It means that the shelf life is larger in glass bottle as compared to strip or blister. Shelf life means you can see the expiry period mentioned on the back side of your uh, blister or strip packaging. It may be up to 2 years or maximum 3 years. So as compared to that, glass bottle is said, uh, said to give the larger shelf life. Blister pack. Head seal blistered on a cardboard. Just like your blister packaging, here in this image you can see a blister package. Here we are utilizing the aluminium packaging. So instead of using aluminum back, you can also use the heat sealed blister on cardboard. Here you can see we are utilizing the cardboards for packing the capsules, hard gelatin capsules. Then plastic pail or buckets we can also use for the hard gelatin capsules. Plastic pouch, ziplock. As shown in this image, we are utilizing for the hard gelatin.